here we are at the GSDL. I'm Jesus with me is Artosis. How you doing, man? I am so excited. We have two great matches to go through today, Tasteless. The first FX Open against IM. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm really pumped as well, man. It's going to be pretty cool, man. I think uh, this match is going to be one where FXO has a lot to prove uh, in this situation. Uh, they have not won a lot of games. Well, they've not really had much success so far, but here they come now. This might be the moment, though. Could it be, Tasteless? This is going to be their last match of the season. Can they go home with a win? It's going to be a pretty hard match, I have to say. Well, you don't really get much harder than having to face off against Team IM. You know, mm. they're, uh, for lack of better words, pretty good. Basically you have no better words than pretty basically good? Basically the best team in the world here. And once again, FXO fanboy, he won the shirt, now gets that sign. He's happy to He's have that. Happy guy Being right a now. fanboy and all. Yeah, man. And here they are. An elite squad of nerd assassins. They are. I'm excited to see, um, you know, what kind of strategies they're going to use here, who they're going to throw out. I don't know. Are you having some audio problems, Artosis? Uh, just a little bit, Tasis. I'll you try to take care of that. Yeah. I think you messed my switch, Tasis. Yeah, I didn't actually swap your headphones today, so I'm like, I was trying to switch those knobs and I realized I was actually messing these up. Look at that fix at the start of the game. Well, here are the key players, Oz, Moon, and QXC. The closer is going to be Oz. There's two Terrans and a Protoss there. It says the captain is Sean Simon. Unfortunately, Chef and FXO have actually parted ways. Yes. Announced today. So he's no longer going to be their team captain. I'm pretty sure that would be awkward. But uh, <laughs> let's take a look here. Oh, wow. Look at this. Yeah. We've got a Fancy here. we got a uh, all sorts of sexy shapes. We've got... <laughs> Pie charts, we got Venn diagrams. That circle dude. is my favorite color taste list. Is it? It's got four Protoss, two Terran, <laughs> two Zerg. Somebody who didn't watch uh, one of our previous casts is not going to get that that's a joke. It's not a color. You said that. You didn't notice. Mm -hmm. Here is the lineup of these guys. Again, a chef of three to the left he is no longer on the team, but the rest uh, still remain. Even our commentator, Wolf, giving a thumbs down to whichever nerd he's looking at right now. He's looking right at me, Tasteless. I am oh going to have God. to take that up with him. And here they are. Yep. Slog in the middle. We I'm used to compete against him back in the good old days. I, uh, we certainly did taste good old StarCraft 1 player, as was Moonin. The others, a little bit newer. Well, I guess Twilight was actually a great, uh, or rather, Oz now. It was a great player in yeah. StarCraft 1 as well. But enough about that. On to these badasses. We're here at with Team I Am coming out. They've won many team leagues before, sporting their black and mustard yellow jerseys. <laughs> These guys are deadly. They are indeed tasteless. They have Nesty. Will he be used today? I'm sure FXO is hoping no. No, he's not. MVP in there, Lucira, Youngpaw. I wonder if we could see Seed. Could we see Seed Oh, today? what if Seed comes back? How spectacular would that be? That would be pretty epic. You know, I really love watching anybody from Team IM because they are just so talented. Obviously, yeah. Epic so is a good team. It's just that, you know, when you compare them to a team like IM, that becomes a little bit of a difficult thing to do. Yeah. Very and very this true. lucky guy is going to get a little IM flag signed for him. Yeah, and look at that, our cameraman. He's all woozy over the prospects of someone getting the flag. He wishes I know, he's he had it. Yeah, man, he's getting a little bit dizzy. Said, how many signatures are on there? Whoa. <laughs> so, I am. Yeah, I think the only team that could rival this is maybe Slayers, but I'm still going to go with I am being better right now. You know, they have two two time champions. Nest T gearing up for his third championship pretty soon here. Yep, there's Nesty uh, taking a quick nap. He's older than us, so, you know, <laughs> sometimes he kind of doze off for a little bit. He's meditating, Jason. Let's take a look at these guys now. Incredible miracle. And their key players are going to be MVP Lucera and Young Hua. Young Hua has been doing greatly in the, you know, anytime we see him, basically, especially against Protoss. In fact, he just did very well. He's and recently. So good. Recent IC Cup Korean Weekly. Make sure you guys check that out. Take and closer, Nesty. They're so, all these guys are just so talented. Now here's Nesty. Looks like he wants to challenge uh, you to an arm wrestling match, Artosis. Are you going to back down on that? Of 
Of course I am, Tasteless. Yeah, that's I could team. punch a hole through my head. <laughs> now, um, you know, the, the one of the things about I am, and as you can see with their win record here, that shape will probably, probably makes a lot more sense to you guys now that you saw it after the FXO. Mm -hmm. I think he, these guys um, are already doing very well. Yeah, they certainly are. In, in the team league. And as you can see, it's a pretty balanced lineup here. Yeah. Three Protoss, three Terran, and I think four that's going to be one of the most balanced and one of the most Zerg heavy. You know, Lucira, Nesty, Junli, and... Horror. Horror. That's going to be a hard name for us to say without saying, sound like we're saying the word horror, but that's... uh. Horror? What, what, what are we going to do? Horror. I'm horror. 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 Now, all these guys, uh, very skilled. The two on the left, as you can see, probably you guys don't know them very well, mm -hmm. but uh, they are... They, obviously, if they're playing with these guys, they're going to be pretty deadly. Now, we not, might not see as many of their heavyweights today because, let's face it, FXO right now not doing well in the team league. If I was the team coach, I'd say, all right, send out the guys that don't have as much experience on TV. Send out the guys where, you know, they, uh, if, if they're they probably good, but they might still have nerve issues. Yeah. Let's get that out of the way. Get and some experience. You're right. And, in fact, they're sending out horror today. We have Slog there translating. For, uh, his Korean is so good. How does he do it? I think it has something to do with his lineage, but we'll have to ask him later. Is that the prop usage of the word lineage? Yeah. It is? I think she might be right. I'm, I am, I got good vocabularies. You have a pretty good lexicon there. It's all right. Where do we take this? <laughs> it's like our first awkward moment. Just our get into first. this. Is your audio stuff okay, Artosis? We uh, actually, the cord for our headphones, guys, is actually swapped, so. It started out pretty loud. <laughs> it started out pretty loud. I'm like, oh, so I go down here and start turning all these knobs, and our toes are going to be like, ah, stop. Yeah. So you can hear everything okay? I can hear right, right now. See that we just acknowledge that now. We actually try to ride this out. And <laughs> it's about an hour and a half from now, when we get our first commercial break, I'm like, well, I didn't know what you were saying for that hour and a half. All right, I'm glad well, we got that all sorted out. Our first match, Chase, is going to be I'm Horror against QXC. Horror. Yeah, horror. 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 Say it, say it ten horror. times fast. Horror, 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 horror. Okay, see what it's... Okay, all right. <laughs> so, um, FXO, um, you know, with QXC on the team, he's really good. He's, he's very coming good, out here man. For, I think he might be, um, I don't know, I'd say the player with the most uh, guts going into a match like this, the most experience, at least as of, as of late. I mean, obviously, Slog has a lot of experience, but, uh, you know, that's more old school stuff. Here are the standings so far. As you can see, FXO actually with negative 12. Ouch. Ouch. That is pretty bad. Yeah, it's, um, it's not doing so well. And their other FXO counterpart, Foyu, at minus one in fifth place. Uh, we so have if C you put that together, that's negative 13. Yes, Stasis, indeed it is. Yeah. Uh, NS Hoso and I am up at the top there. Two very, very good teams. You know, I, I am is just, it's such an interesting team for me because when we first started commentating the team league, I. You know, when you get a team this big, and since we've done so many individual leagues, I see some of these new players. Like I saw Seed, I'm like, all right, there's a dude named Seed coming out. I hope he's good. I, I, this will be an interesting game. I want to get acquainted with this player. And then I'm watching him play, and I'm like, oh, oh my God. Mm. He's so good. So Very true. I, uh, I wonder, you know, if we're going to see some new players like that here. I think FXO, one of the main reasons why they've been having problems is just kind of getting used to Korea, getting used to playing on the Korean ladder with different strategies. Um, you know, if you're a competitive player and you're not in Korea, generally your experience of, of a tournament is getting on a plane. You don't get to really practice that much beforehand. Sometimes you're jet lagged. The tournament uh, is done over the course of an entire a day or two. That's a different animal to take on than uh, something like this here where it's like, well, you might only be playing one game, pre prepare for an entire week for one game. You know, you walk 10 minutes to the studio, you do it. Yeah. That is actually very different. I'm not saying one is better than the other. Um, because, you know, when you get to the international tournaments, you really get to see who's the most well-rounded. Yeah, in a lot has of ways, stamina, has stamina all yeah. sorts of things like that. But You're in this right. case, these guys, I don't think they've been used to that kind of setup. It's very true. But I'm really know, getting wise. used to it, the I'm more really they smart. play tasteless, you are... A genius, man. Go on. Don't You're so smart. Um, what do you think about this first match, Chase? This QXC against Horror. The map is going to um, be Belshire Beach. It's a TVZ. What do you think? I would say I think QXC should win this. You think so? Look, I mean, if I was, if I was in a team league, to be honest, I would want to be put in first. 
mm. if I was playing. I think the, like my attitude, like I don't know if my play style is actually good for that. I'd probably be better as like an assassin player. But yeah. as far as like me being comfortable, you know, I'd be like, well, you know, if I win, that's great. We're off to a good start. If I lose, there's not too much pressure. Yeah, you know, but that's uh, that's that's what I would think. And I. QXC, I, sometimes when I talk to him, I feel like he has a similar personality or attitude uh, yeah, as I in do. In a lot so. of ways. Uh, I, yeah. I like him coming out first. You know, he's it's it's not bad. They've tried a lot of things, and yeah. not a lot have worked. So, hey, throw out QXC first. It's a hard map for any Protoss players, which they're pretty deep on. So they obviously don't want to send Protosses right. out. But, uh, so, guys, uh, let's not forget about our contest that we've been running here. The slogan contest. Our current slogan was, uh, your turn to fly. That was back before we had a lot of English speakers at GOM TV. Yeah. Now, it's now it's time to change that. Yeah, definitely and it's time. give us some uh, ideas for different slogans. The best slogan. Uh, you're going to get a nice little prize. Look at that. One-year GSL ticket. And that's pretty good. And that's going to be all over the world. And then basically you're at a party and you're like, she, you know, you're talking to some girl. She doesn't know much about you. And you just like throw out, you know, offhandedly. You know, I came up with the, uh, you know, GSL slogan. Boom! You're getting She's laid. Like, Boom. The show that Tastosis is on. She goes, oh. no, do it. Get your priorities straight and do it. So, yeah. Uh, and of course, that's like such an easy contest to participate in. You know, mm. you get to you get to be the Mad Men guys for a little bit. Okay, <laughs> you get to do that. Yeah, you get to do. You that, get to drink tasteless. whiskey at one in the afternoon, and then I don't know why those guys don't have headaches like an hour later. I'd be like, oh, I drink whiskey at one. Now I can't do anything. <laughs> they know how to live, Tasteless. All right, here is QXC. He's got his bandana on. It matches his shirt. It matches his beautiful blue eyes. Yeah. And uh, this guy, since the beta, has been a pretty formidable Terran. Yeah. Some of these players, you know, they, they come up, you know, a few months after the game comes out. This guy was around before the game was even out, and he is very scary. He is a pretty fearsome player, Tasteless. Uh, you know, he's he won sometimes for them in the last match that we watched and then got cleaned up by, I believe it was Choya, actually, who's now kind of a teammate of his uh, since the FOU FXO purchase type deal. But yep. uh, his TVZ, very, very good. Got eliminated by Don Gregu in two close games in the GSL qualifiers. But he's against someone from IM, and the IM team has an ST on it. So any Zerg on that team is going to be twice as fearsome as you think. Yeah, true that. Now, let's go on to our other player, Horror. Oh, his name's going to be hard to say during the cast. Okay, this guy, you know, we don't see as much of him, and it is his first time playing in the GSL. Um, I had heard about this guy a little bit before. Yep. But... You know, obviously, if you're a Zerg and you're on the same team as Nest T, that has to be a good thing. Oh, certainly, Tasteless. I mean, this guy is going to be good. I have no doubt about it. Uh, but someone with not a lot of stage experience, whereas QXC has plenty and plenty and plenty. Yeah. So, uh, I think I am not throwing this guy out because they're saying he's well-rounded, he's got stamina. I think instead, and not even throwing him out, uh, you know, for because he's their best player or anything. I think they're just throwing him out here because... They want to give this guy some TV experience. I think I am is 100% sure. There's no way they can lose to FXO. Yeah, they definitely feel that way, Tasteless. I mean, they, they're normally, they feel there's no way they can lose to Startail. So, yeah, FXO is the team that's doing the worst in the league. Of course, they're going to feel pretty confident. But FXO, man, they get better and better all the time. They have some really heavy hitters on the team right now. Oh, yeah. And I would love to see an upset. Our map is Belshire Beach. Bring the beach ball. That's what, that's what it's called, the beach ball. Yeah, it is called a beach ball. You're Bring right. your little uh, buckets so you can make sand Make castles. sure that you uh, use sunscreen. It's yeah. really dangerous not to. If you're a pasty person like me, man, it's 10 minutes in the sun and I turn into a lobster, man. <laughs> All right, the game is starting. Can FXO prove themselves against a team as good as I am? If FXO wins this, it would be one of the biggest upsets in the GSTL of all time. Let's see if it's going to happen. The game is loading head-to-head -head QXC against Horror here at the GSTL.
over here in the bottom right starting location, we have. Good. See, there are no vowels in that name. <laughs> Actually, I do like uh, names where it's just a few letters, though. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I've heard of him. Yeah, I've I've heard of QXC. We've all heard of him. That guy's been down here the last couple of days of the studio. Nice guy. Over here in the upper left, we have our new face here in the GSL. GSTL, excuse me. From the team I am, he is... Wait for it. I'm waiting. <gasps> I am Oro. Or. I'm really curious with this guy. I really want to see what he has to offer, um, what kind of strategies he's going to try to execute here. Yeah. Some nice signs out there. The guy's got his little flag. He's got his flag. He's going to put that right over the flag of whatever nationality is because that's what's more important. What StarCraft teams do you represent? Agreed, Tasis. Agreed. Drone yeah. got to have a nice little swim there in the uh, water. Before seeing that QXC is walled in, so he will check for the add-on. He no, does not see an add-on. That is right. Uh, probably be seeing a factory pretty quickly here, as there is no add-on, as you said, Tasis, but could switch it up into some sort of uh No, nope, definitely going to be that. You don't make two Marines and then a Tech Lab Tasis, and if you do, you're weird. You're a weird guy. But that would be really weird to do. Well, right now we do see uh, no gas quite yet for our Zerg player, or. I'm really excited to see what type of style horror actually plays with because we've already seen a couple of the well a few of the IM Zergs. Uh Junwei, whose style was just to play very below what we were told he is. And then we have <laughs> Lucira, who's kind of just a very quick Zerg that kinda of does everything. And then we have Nesty, the ultimate reactive Zerg. So they all play very, very differently. Well if Kerrigan was gonna date somebody I mean, she'd be all over Nest T. She's actually not good enough for Nest T. Okay. You don't think so? Nest T. Look, let's face it, our toes. Is Kerrigan is kind of hot. Of course. You but know. Nest T deserves more than kind of. Okay? Mm, true that. Nest T is actually so good, he should not be with anybody, Tasis. He needs to just be alone and just, whenever he's feeling lonely, just thinks to himself who he truly is. And he's like, wait, I'm, all he needs I'm is a Nest T. Why would I ever think that? That's silly. Okay, so we're going to see the Hellion opening. This is so common. I almost feel like I want to call this just the standard TVZ opener. Yeah, it's pretty with standard. Gas. I, it initially, it was kind of a build where it was like, oh, that's cute. I like that. But mm -hmm. I could see why you want to use it. Uh, Zerg, you know, one of the advantages they tend to you know, default um, with early on. Oh, my God, we had somebody crash in my set. All right, Always. everything's okay. We got to get that thing nailed down. I'm going to send an email to work. We got to, um, so one of the things we always see here, um, from Zerg as a kind of default advantage is that they get map control early on. Yes, they have the yes. Overlords out there, Zerglings out there. This at least gets the Zergling part out of the way. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like the build that Horror is doing. Just getting his gases right now when he's already up at about 24 drones. He's just been really focusing on getting his mineral income going. A couple of spine crawlers already up, and he does have two queens with another one on the way. As well as He's kind of made a little bit of a wall with an evolution chamber. So everything looking pretty good. There you go. There's the wall. And those Hellions not going to be able to really do anything right now. Yeah, moments like this, you just want to make sure Zerg can't lay any more Crate Tumors. Mm. Just to lay that. Well, we do have Blue Flame coming for QXC. I like, I like. Also a Starport being started. And there you go. There they are. I wasn't lying. Wouldn't you do guys got to trust guys. him, man. I don't know why you guys would think he's lying to you. He's a good guy. I am. Thank you, Tasis. No problem. But anyways, uh, we only have two gases going for our IMs. I see that. That's what I'm talking about. Good. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just ran over you. No, but. Things like that are quite nice. I mean, you stop a few creep tumors. really slows the creep down. And so many Zergs, especially ones I haven't played a lot on TV, don't get those extra creep tumors after you kill them. You know, they just kind of fall apart on creep spread. So little things like that can make huge differences in a game like this. Yeah, creep spread is something you have to maintain through the entire game. Yeah. It's not something where you're just going to like, oh, I'll, I'll catch up on that later. If you're yeah. not doing it the entire time, it's going to be very apparent, you know, mm -hmm. five minutes from then. So I, I cannot wait. Oh, okay. A Baneling Nest is actually going to be going up as the layer is finishing. 
still trying to poke around with these Hellions. A medevac is being constructed so that he can do a blue flame Hellion drop. But uh, what other techs will I Am Horror go for? He's going up only to a third gas, no fourth quite yet. Definitely looking like it's going to be a Spire. Three barracks now, two currently constructed, but there'll be three total. And uh, it looks like QXC right now just kind of going for a very solid, standard way of playing the game. Same here for Horror as well. Hmm. Kind of interesting that right now he is just continuing on Blue Flame Hellions and getting some barracks up. So we could see a composition that we don't normally see that much, which is a lot of Hellions and a lot of Bionic. Oh, very nice. nice. That's what I'm talking about. Very, very nice move indeed. You can always cancel those, so I'm or maybe a little bit slow there. He's, he's sending this medevac up here, so what he's going to do is he's keeping this looking like a contain. And he's going to switch that right into a drop. I really like this build. Yeah, but we do have a bunch of speedlings in the main. He does know it's coming, Tasteless. He's ready for it. There's overlords on the edge of his base. Yeah, this is one of these drops. you got to get everything out first, because mm -hmm. if he sees it coming... Uh, and he gets his earlings over there. Oh my god, he didn't send his earlings down. He no, really he saw not. it. But he has some banelings on the way, and this looks like it may be enough. Picks it up. Smartly, QXC getting away. Now, Zerk can only uh, dive in there so many times. Nice pick up there. He needs to not actually... I don't know why he keeps backing away from that. <laughs> yeah, you can actually sit right there. Yeah, you can just like, stay there. He, well, if he does it again. See, now, I don't know why he's doing that. QXC That's right now. Just, oh, the tree's on fire. Way out, Mikering. Horror. Yeah, QXC is way out playing this guy right now. And finally he does bring over a queen. Probably should be targeting the medevac right now. Because it's we actually the micro that's killing him. All right, so far I'm not impressed with horror. Well, you know, it's his first match. Yeah. I'm going to give him a little bit of time. And QXC is expanding again on top of that. Note, Zerg's creep spread is basically limited to the front door of the second base. So that's... I mean, to be honest, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, I right now don't see QXC losing this game. The drop was taken, and I think QXC probably should have stayed out of there a little bit. You know, it's weird. We've seen so many Terran players who just kind of stay with drops yeah. after Mutalisks are out. It, there's really no way any good player is going to allow that oh. to work for you. And that Viking does go down. QXC has to be careful. He's kind of in the middle of the map right now, destroying the gold rocks. And, well, Horror just flying around with these Mutas, trying to get some harassment. He's getting that third base up, but I love the timing of QXC's third orbital. I like his setup. He's well defended everywhere, adding a second turret to his main. Look at that. Nice little barracks placement, so it's going to be harder to actually do any run-bys and stuff like that. QXC so far, QXC, pretty good. QXC hasn't really made an error. No, he's, he's playing game, a nice Mike. game. In fact, his SCV count's reasonably high. He's at 43 against 58 drones. So that's pretty reasonable, all in all. Now, you know, I, I hope that QXC has learned a lot about TBZ while he's been out here. You know, I know that on a lot of these other servers for the non-Koreans, a lot of people have been having a hard time in TBZ. And uh, right now, the trend is you kind of have to play a more passive game. You have to go for a longer game. You have to be uh, intelligent and good in your ghost control. So that definitely sounds like something QXC uh, could be quite good at. You know, looking at his style, he's very good at micro. He's very good at keeping track of everything. So I'm hoping that we see him gear up for that rather than some weird timing. And with taking that gold base already, I think that I, is going to be the case. I think right now, this is getting pretty bad for Horror because, you know, all QX has to do is wait for the Zerg to respond and take the gold base and then attack. He does. QX does not need to move out right now. He does yeah. not need to do that. And in fact, he should not. I mean, he just took that gold. He's got to just kind of turtle it up. He does... You know, Horror, he's three base against three base. Even though Horror has a little bit more drones, he has no mules. So really right now, QXC has a much better economy. Okay, here we and go. And he's safe. We saw Bailings kind of lean in there for a minute. Horror has struck me as kind of a... just very passive in this game. I see what he's trying to do there. Mm -hmm. This is really nice marine spread. Go ahead, Artosis. Uh, look at the minimap, Tasis. Right now we have two uh, sensor towers. Yeah. And that's really giving QXC a full look at everything. He sees every single thing coming in. He is not going to be caught off guard. He already has three bases. He's looking actually extremely solid. I am totally enjoying QXC's play. You can really see that he has been improving over here in Korea. All right. Some... Uh Mutalisk kind of contain here. It looks like right now the game plan 
for uh, horror is just to kind of bank on some of these baneling landmines yeah. uh, being set up. And I actually I do like this strategy because we don't see it a lot on this map. Oh, tasteless. What? A raven is being made. QXC, oh, nice. I'm falling in love with thee. This is amazing. People need to make a raven in this matchup because right now, especially in Korea, a lot of Zergs are using a ton of baneling landmines. And if you have a raven with your army, they will never hit. Yeah. There's a possibility that you will kill yeah. enough banelings that it pays for the raven, which is already a good unit. It basically voids out the strategy, and some Zerg strategies are completely centered around that. Yeah, true. And that alone. That is so true, Tasteless. Uh, this is actually looking really exciting for me. QXC has two star ports up. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of barracks making another command center. He's already got his two engineering bays going in an armory. Everything is looking really nice. The second factory is up. He's getting a great unit composition right now. Huge amount of banelings out on the map. In fact, he's focusing on that. He's got 14 mutas and one corruptor. Not exactly sure why he has exactly one corruptor. It's kind of interesting. But uh, QXC scouting down here, finding that extra Zerg base. Okay, here we go. We got a big attack gearing up, and Zerg is going for it. Indeed he is, and the Raven taking some damage there, but is not killed. A ton of Banelings just rolling down. Another Sea Shank there trying to target, and he burrows. Yeah, what? He burrows when there's a Raven. What there's the a hell? Raven there, and he burrows. I'm very confused. That was uh, more random than some of our jokes in the GSL. That was uh, weird. Yeah, that was definitely something else. That was like the only thing that could, not only that there was, was a not supposed as to well. happen. Yeah, that was the only thing that was not supposed to happen. Wow. I'm well. actually I glanced back at the IM team and they're all laughing at what they just saw. <laughs> Are they? Yeah, really? and they're like, oh my god, what is he doing? Well, obviously that was a mistake. Yeah, it was probably just a misclick of some sort, tasteless. Um, but anyways, I mean, QXC is in even better shape than before. We just saw a bajillion banelings go in there and do almost no damage. You know, they kill off a few marines and oh. whatnot, but that's it. Now QXC has to be careful, does not want to lose these Siege Shanks and Medivacs for free. No reason to do that. The banelings just kind of coming in here and, Nice well, use of a uh, point defense drone. Mm -hmm. The Muta's not being able to do any damage there. Another tree burns down. Luckily, it was not a forest fire. Yeah. That'd be a sad thing, Tasteless. That'd be pretty cool. Area. Think about that. If you actually like burn, like a tree would catch on fire, and eventually the whole level would be on fire. That would be cool. Be cool, actually. man. Wow, You're smart, Tasteless. Yeah. And uh, so, right now, QXC 150 supply to 128. I mean, he's at 81 SCVs against 71 drones. The army of our Zerg is literally just zergling banely. That's it. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what his plan is, other than just try to kill my opponent with banelings. Which is not working and not going to work. QXC uh, handling everything very, very well. Losing very little. And in fact, he's taking a fourth base, Tasteless. All right, the gold base is mined out. That's not a shocker. Terran mine out the gold base so fast. And look at that. All his guns are going to his fourth. All right, I, I, now at this point in time, I'm wondering uh, what exactly is QXC's plan? Because he's held on for a little bit, but he mined out the gold base. He, the Zerg never opted to take the gold, probably afraid that he could push. But um, still, I mean, the situation here, uh, is he actually ever going to push, or is he just going to try to stop the Zerg from taking uh, any fifth base? He's already denied this fifth base with ease. Yeah, there weren't many drones there to start anyways. About four drones were mining. Uh, the top right just starting to mine as well. QXC, a lot of turrets going down. He's got to protect that. But um, he's just, he's so far ahead right now, Tasteless. Uh, our Zerg player not even going for a hive. In fact, QXC just scanned it to check. No hive on the way. He's not upgrading infestors. He's not getting infestors. He's just making Zerglings and Banelings. And they are doing less and less damage each and every time. All right, here come the Banelings and the Mutalisks. Again, this is interesting because QXC is really just kind of hunkered down, bunkered down. I don't yeah. think I can actually hunker down, but... Um, hunker but down but here's, here's the problem is that the bottom left location is the only one that's really accessible. The upper right is kind of in Zerg's territory. And, you know, the more, hold that thought, more Banelings coming in here. And uh, nice spreads by QXC, really minimizing spreads. the effect of those Banelings. It's got to be careful not to lose all those Medivacs and Raven, though. Uh, one thing I do want to point out that's really funny, QXC has plus one armor on his mech, which is kind of funny, and plus one armor on Banelings for horror. So both of them kind of getting funny upgrades that we don't normally see. All right, 
Uh, Zerk now taking both gases over here. So he's going to have a lot of gas income uh, with that upper right base. Uh, there's all that. Okay. This game is actually just nonstop action, Artosis. There's yeah, not as much room to analyze here. Um, you know, this is getting a little bit bad for the Zerg. Yeah, it's... He's at 2-2s, two uh, his 3-3s three <laughs> on the way, and he's losing a Man. lot of Banelings that aren't paying for themselves. A lot of Mutalists are going down. He's down 60 supply. His upgrades Shoot. are terrible, where his QXC is already 2-2 two, two on Marines, 3-3 three, three on the way. QXC is getting his Ghost Academy before a Hive has even started. QXC is in a position a lot where he's barracks. not going to lose, basically. I mean, he's he's pretty much just got this taste. So I think the Zerg yeah. might even leave any time. GG. Yeah. There you go. And QXC started out right for FXO. Very nicely oh, done. Yeah. He played very well that game. Now, the FXO team told me they would buy him a Jedi robe if he all killed the team. Really? Yeah. That's actually pretty badass. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, it is. If I had a Jedi robe, I'd walk around with it on. I wouldn't wear anything underneath it. That's the kind of thing. That's the you know what guy they call that in Korea? What? Bari Bari Man. <laughs> Oh, if people who speak Korean know that's funny. Ah, uh, well, well, QXC very happy with himself, as he should be. Who will uh, I am use? You know, they well, can't be too sloppy. They can't be overconfident. QXC just completely outclassed for. Oh my God, they yeah. outclassed him in every single. Well, way. I mean, it looked like there were like two players from different divisions. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I, it was like a master against a grandmaster there. I think. I don't know. I, I, if, if I were I am, I would probably use one more player kind of as a, you know, like let's send this guy out here, give him some experience. And after that, it's like, okay, there's no screwing yeah, that's, around here. I, yeah, if you get two killed uh, by QXC using two newer players, I think you have to bring out one of your top guns. Yeah. You have to bring out at least a Young Hua, probably an MVP or uh, an ST. You don't want to lose this. You know, they're second place in their division, which is probably surprising them uh, with NS Hosa doing so well. But they have got to uh, pick up the slack. They have got to get wins. That's what's yeah. important. They need wins. And, in they... fact, as you saw, it's, it's point-based as well. So uh, to even throw away a few games, that's going to be less, less points. It's, it's not have. like our old bracket system where it's like, well, a win is a win. It doesn't matter how you get there as long as you have yeah, exactly. uh, that win. I mean, if, if you're following people, that's a different uh, kind of uh, – well, it benefits you more than if you're 4-3. So okay. who do they bring out then? Tasteless. Um – I, I hope so. Actually, I might say maybe Young Hua, actually. But we'll be Young Hua. I think what's actually happening is, oh, oh my god. Oh, Sarah, don't do that. It's like horror again. I'm like, what? <laughs> and it is. I didn't actually get a good view of that. No. Sarah was covering his face. It's one of the newer guys, too. Yeah, so. I think so. You can't memorize every face in the world. No, cases. I can't. You're only so perfect. I'm only, yes. All right. Hey. Nice to meet you. Ah, uh, it's. PP actually. Oh I yeah. Am he is the team captain. Uh, he's actually someone I've used to play a lot on the ladder. Uh, and we see he's not done that well here yet. I believe he was in GSL season one, I want to say. Yeah, um, I think the first Code S. Yeah. Or maybe it was Code A. Oh, did he make it into Code A as well? Huh. But no, I, I don't I, think he's I, I think call it was Code him from a. like maybe season one like a year ago. But uh anyways, he's a Protoss. Good choice. Bring him out to battle QXC. QXC literally just ran out of the studio. I don't think it's because he's afraid, though. I think he probably has to pee. He has to. He's like, the guy's name is like, oh, PP is coming out. I have to PP. And he gets out of there, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, QXC has got to be feeling so confident going into that. If you're the first guy in the team thing and you won that, you're going to, you know, from here it's all, you know, smooth sailing. Yes. I've done at least my part. If I can win this now, my team's in a really good place. Now it's up to the rest of my teammates. So we'll get QXC back in the booth in a minute. QXC had to had to BP, so he'll be right back. Yeah. Uh, the map it. is going to be Zellnager Caverns. Uh, QXC is actually pretty darn good at this map. There yeah. he goes. He almost just tripped. Look at that. Look at him go. Look at that stride. over, yeah. Think about that, though. I mean, I'd be pretty motivated if I was going to get a Jedi robe. Is that right? Yeah. Tasteless. Well, that's... that's. Go I'm going to think of some reward system. Jedi robes. I'm going to think of some reward system to get I'm, you a Jedi robe. Be naked in the Jedi robe. How many times do you get to say, I'm not wearing any clothes under my Jedi robe? I guess it'd be underpants, wouldn't it? What? Underpants probably sounds better. Oh, not wearing any underpants under, under my Jedi, Jedi robe? Yeah. 
Oh, Obi Wan. You can go either way. Going commando. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tasteless. Um, <laughs> I have a million terrible jokes I can say, and I don't. I'm not going to say them. Okay. Um, so QXC is getting back uh, in the uh, in the game right now, and when both players are ready, we're going to get this going. Yeah. TVP is all night caverns. I'm very excited. QXC, what will you open with? There's a lot of different things you can do uh, for both races on this map. You know, we have a small ramp, so you can tech. Yeah. Uh, the expansion can be a little bit tricky to defend, but, you know, not, neither of these guys are Zergs, so it's like, you know, not as uh, tough. You know, it's like, oh, God, I don't have my spine crawlers in place. Mm. You do want to be careful uh, for, like, an MC-style push. It's not as yeah. popular nowadays, but no, when you have a big berth there, you get a lot of force fields you can put up. Mm. You can kind of angle yourself so you're only fighting half the bunkers. You know, a lot of this game might come down to can PP stop the harassment of QXC? That's actually yeah. how he plays. He loves to multitask. He loves to tax multitask and drop everywhere at once. You know, late game, he yeah. even gets Reaper speed because he's all over the map. He's really good about that. Um, another thing to note, uh, I, in my personal, can I can I give you can I give my opinion? Can no, I do an IMO here? That's not what this is. This is I know it's about me. Yeah. Jock, all right, jock. all right, go go. Uh, I don't think people should be going Colossus anymore on this map. You don't think so? No, I think I think with the the caverns in the middle, and uh, you know the the two high grounds next to that, I don't think you can actually do an effective attack without it, you know getting your colossi picked off. You know, there's you have a good point there. Uh, I one thing I just yeah. One thing I do like is a lot of Terrans love to make planetaries with gold, so uh, Colossus poking in that area can be quite nice. Yeah, no, that's true. Or you know what you can do? You can make one Colossus and then just switch out of it because most Terrans will end up making like eight Vikings before they figure out what's yes. actually going on. That can be quite true. You know what actually be really sick is if you made hallucination after you make that one Colossus and poke once and run away. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Then they way over make Vikings. That's yeah. Good thing this. I'm not playing in this. Alright. The game has begun. It's time. The game is loaded. QXC against BP. Who's going to win? We're going to find out. Both those names right. Let's just get that out of the way. Everybody's thinking. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for adjusting that.